Hello everyone, I'm Ron Berger and this is the Astrology News Report for September 8th, 2024. This is the Applied Astrology segment where I take a look at a situation in current events and try to find corresponding planetary patterns and astrological energy combinations. This will be a special report on the Vedic birth chart of Kamala Harris current Democratic nominee for President of the United States. This won't be an exhaustive analysis, no time for that, just an overview. Ms. Harris was born in Oakland, California on October 20th, 1964 at 9.28 p.m. according to her birth certificate. Her Vedic birth chart is rather unusual in a number of ways. Let's start with the essentials. She is Gemini rising with an Aries moon. Gemini is a very mental sign and is the most dualistic sign of the zodiac. Gemini can say one thing while thinking something totally different. Gemini can see things from multiple points of view simultaneously. Gemini is adaptable. It is the quintessential diplomat of the Zodiac. Gemini loves novelty, loves getting new insights, dreaming up new schemes, and embarking on new projects. On the downside, this can lead to having too many projects going on and not following through and finishing things. Gemini can have problems making decisions and sticking to them. This is a sign noted for having the ability to adapt one's expression to suit the listener. A now famous example of this is when Harris spoke with a fake southern accent when addressing a crowd at a rally in Georgia, and for taking on other folksy or blue-collar pronunciation such as she did when addressing union members in Detroit. In linguistics, this is known as code switching, which a lot of people do in order to fit in with a group or to convey thoughts or concepts in such a way that the audience might find it more acceptable. Some people regard this ability as an asset. Others think it makes you less than genuine, maybe even condescending to people who you think won't understand your college-level English. Now let's check out her moon. The natal moon is the next most important significator after the ascendant sign. Kamala Harris is born with an Aries moon. This is a very dynamic sign, ruled by the planet of action, Mars. Aries is the sign of the adventurer. Aries seeks out challenges wants to make new conquests, new discoveries. Like Mars, Aries is impatient and can be impulsive. Aries is restless. There's a need for action, and Aries wants fast results. See, too, that this is an exact full moon. A full moon, especially in a fire sign like Aries, makes a person very passionate, highly reactive, and with powerful intuition. Note that Donald Trump is also born on a full moon, but in his case, his moon is in Scorpio and conjunct K2. In fact, Trump was born when a total lunar eclipse was just about to begin. But more specifically, for Kamala Harris, note that her natal moon is in the early degrees of Aries, which puts it in the Ashvini Nakshatra. This is one of the good lunar signs. Ashvini is named for the Ashwins, a pair of twin horsemen who gallop around the universe helping people out of jams. But this energy is more about initiating new things and about quick fixes. It's not so useful for long-term projects. So, it's best if Ms. Harris has others to delegate to 
for completing projects she initiates. Now let's consider some of the key planetary combinations in her chart. First up, Rahu conjunct the ascendant degree. This is definitely an exceptional combination. It makes Kamala Harris a Rahu person. Rahu is one of the intersection points of the path of the sun and the path of the moon. It's an eclipse point. Therefore, Rahu and its opposite Ketu can obscure things and cause confusion. In Vedic mythology, Rahu is a dragon serpent. He's one of the demons. Rahu the demon has a special power. He can transform himself into any shape he so desires. In other words, Rahu is a shapeshifter. And this is in Gemini, a sign that already readily adapts itself to any situation. Demons have powerful desires. Demons are ambitious. Demons want what they want and will use any means to get their desires met. So, this is a bit concerning, but there are other factors in this chart, such as the full moon in Ashvini, which compensate for the downsides of having the dragon demon's shapeshifter significator conjunct the ascendant degree. Interestingly, too, Kamala Harris was born in the Chinese year of the dragon, so she's like a double dragon. There are two Parivartana Yogas in this chart. Parivartana is when two planets are in each other's signs. This type of pattern forms a powerful bond between the two planets that are involved. Harris's natal moon is in Aries, one of Mars's signs, and Mars is in Cancer, the moon sign. Mars is adding its energy to her moon, her moon is adding its energy to Mars. This combination results in a lot of passion and amplifies Mars in her second house for assertive speech and emotional speech. Mars in the second house is generally considered a problem. There can be harsh words and combative speech resulting in argument. The other Parivartana Yoga is between Venus in the third house and Sun in the fifth house. This is a more helpful combination. As the planet of love and relationship and sociability, Venus helps to soften the ambition and willfulness of the Sun. The Sun is in Venus's sign Libra, a sign that is naturally inclined to compromise. Note that Mercury, the ruler of the ascendant sign Gemini, is here as well. So she's actually a very Libra kind of person, too. Thus, Venus, the Sun, and Mercury are forming a pattern, and this is very helpful in relating to others. The conjunction of Pluto and Uranus with Venus is kind of odd. It makes Venus more of a public energy. The planet of values is combining with the planet of social revolution and the planet of rebirth and regeneration here in the third house of skills and talents. And then there's Saturn in Aquarius, which as the ruler of the ninth in the ninth house gives a strong sense of destiny and stubborn convictions. Meanwhile, Jupiter, planet of beliefs, is in the 12th house of hidden things and the subconscious. Both planets are retrograde, giving Kamala Harris a lot of inner strength. She is not somebody who can easily be influenced by others. Like she said in the recent interview, her values haven't changed. Okay, so now let's take a look at some of the predictions. Kamala Harris is currently in the Venus sub-period of her Rahu major period. The Rahu major period began for her back in 2012, and that was the year she scored one of her key accomplishments as California's Attorney General, 
forcing the big banks to reform their flawed mortgage foreclosure practices. Rahu is the significator of ambition, innovation, and transformation. Its conjunction with her ascendant degree is one of the main factors contributing to her success in life. As Attorney General, she made efforts to transform the justice system in California. Not all of her changes were popular, either. During her Rahu major period, she became California Senator in 2017, and subsequently the first female Vice President. Her major period of Rahu continues for six more years, until 2030. The Venus sub-period of her Rahu major period began in February of this year, 2024, and continues until February of 2027. For Gemini rising charts, the planet of relationship becomes the ruler of the fifth house of romance, guidance, and good past life credit, as well as the twelfth house, the house of the unknown, which includes unknown people, in other words, the masses. Most successful politicians have a strong twelfth house, and here we see that benefic Jupiter, ruler of her tenth house, of status and success, occupies this sector. Note that Donald Trump also has this combination. The ruler of his tenth house is Venus, and it occupies his twelfth house. But in the case of Harris's chart, Venus itself, as the ruler of the twelfth house, occupies the third, which is the house of skills and talents, and desires, and self-effort. Thus, she makes effort on behalf of the masses. And it doesn't hurt that Uranus and Pluto, both revolutionary planets, accompany Venus, and that Venus is in Leo, the sign of leadership. Okay, now let's take a look at some of the current transits. Since she is approaching her 60th year. Kamala Harris is, simultaneously, going through a Saturn return and a Jupiter return. That's something that happens to everybody around the age of 60. In other words, both Saturn and Jupiter have come back to their natal positions and are therefore reinforcing what they represent in her natal karma. Saturn is right now transiting directly opposite her natal Uranus-Pluto-Venus combination. So, this is indeed a consequential time for her, and she is definitely feeling the burden of responsibility, although, in true Gemini fashion, she's able to conceal that and not show it. Rahu is transiting through her 10th house currently. This is generally good for 10th house significations of reputation, success, and status. Although, having K2 transiting opposite in the 4th house is not favorable for a harmonious home life. Interestingly, K2 transiting in the 4th house is an indication of having to change one's home, which certainly will be the case if she has to move into the White House. Note that Mars, the planet of action and aggression, moved into her Gemini ascendant sign just last month and will be there until October 20th. She's full of energy and willing to take on any challenger. Next month, two weeks before the election, Mars will enter Cancer, joining up with her natal Mars, which will make her second house speech even more passionate and combative. Of course, I'll be reporting on more details on Kamala Harris's astrology, as well as what's going on in Donald Trump's chart during the coming weeks. Okay, that's it for this week's report. Next week, we'll be looking at a new development in the zodiac, Venus transiting into Libra, and what to expect for each rising sign chart. So, until then.